Welcome to the Resource Consumption Accounting Introduction Series, Part 2B, the second half of Resource Consumption Accounting Modeling Principles. This presentation is the second part in a series of presentations introducing RCA and its principles, which are designed to create improved information for managerial decision making and enterprise optimization. I'm Larry White, the Executive Director of the RCA Institute. And this presentation will go into a little more depth on RCA's three foundational principles. It takes about 10 minutes. As you recall from the first webcast on this topic, RCA is based on three foundational principles, causality or cause and effect, responsiveness, and work or process visibility. Let's look at these principles a little more deeply. The principle of causality is the key to linking management accounting information to operations and operational data. Its application is based on the laws of logic, rational inference and analogy, as they apply to inductive reasoning for decision making and most scientific discovery. Managers and employees engaged in production or support operations think about and manage resources first. Cost is an important constraint, but it is an abstraction. The closer costs are related to resources, the more likely they will be used logically. Non-causal allocations and assignments of cost rapidly cause cost figures to lose credibility. Employees and managers engage in economic optimization thinking by first observing an unsatisfactory financial outcome from operations which they want to improve or by observing a very good outcome which they want to repli replicate. Causality allows that financial outcome to be logically and directly traced back to its operational root cause. Managers and employees then conceptualize solutions or courses of action to resolve the problems or replicate the successes. Ideally, they will be able to run the operational solution scenarios through the management accounting model and assess which provides the most desirable economic outcome. Cost must reflect operational resource flows from work center to work center within the organization to be useful for decision making at all levels. Cause and effect relationships are essential in creating a model for economic optimization. And let's be clear, the generally accepted financial accounting and reporting model consistently compromises the principle of causality in regard to managers and employees for other objectives associated with external shareholders. The second principle is responsiveness. Responsiveness is focused on understanding and modeling the fixed and proportional characteristics of resource use and consequently their cost as they are consumed in your organization to create value. Please note I use the term proportional, not variable, for reasons I will explain shortly. Work is organized into groups or resource pools that produce a fairly homogeneous output for reasons associated with span of control and expertise at the supervisory level. These work groups interact with each other, service groups support each other, and support production groups. Each work group consumes resources it owns and some provided by other work groups. The consumption pattern of a work group's resources corresponds to changes in the output of the work group in, in either a fixed relationship or a proportional relationship to that output. For example, if output falls, a resource may be equally busy, hence a fixed relationship, or less busy, hence a proportional relationship. These resource relationships correspond to costs. They must be tracked as they are consumed through the organization's value creation processes. Only by tracing how resource relationships change as they move through a productive process can you achieve the cost divisibility needed for effective ma marginal and incremental decision making. An example of the changing nature of cost is electricity. It is nearly always a proportional cost initially. However, when you decide to heat an office building at night, 
that is only used for 9 to 12 hours each day, electricity becomes part of the fixed cost of a building. For clarity, let me contrast the principle of responsiveness with the principle of variability that is more commonly used but creates problems in decision support. Variability is reflected in a traditional cost volume profit or break-even analysis where every cost in the organization is evaluated as fixed or variable in comparison to the total output of the organization. Remember, responsiveness defined fixed or proportional in relationship to an individual resource pool's output. Analysis against final output of an organization produces very limited information for marginal decision making because you know very little about the interactions of work groups in your organization's value creating processes. You will rapidly come to the conclusion most costs are fixed. The variable costs will typically only be raw materials and assembly components. I was in the Coast Guard for 28 years and the only variable cost of the Coast Guard using this type of analysis is ship, boat, and aircraft for fuel used for operational missions. The principle of variability contributes to the blended cost concept error where variable costs are automatically categorized as avoidable and fixed costs are categorized as unavoidable and a complex discussion about the time span to change things ensues. This is a very confusing, inaccurate, and fundamentally bad way to create effective decision support information. RCA has dropped the term variable to eliminate any confusion with the principle of variability which is inadequate for managerial decision support. RCA presents a better way by its use of responsiveness to gain insights into detailed profit and contribution margins. The third principle is work. Work was the guiding principle of activity-based costing and while it is useful it must never override causality or responsiveness. On the top of the diagram you see a resource pool to resource pool assignment. This is the most common relationship modeled in RCA and it provides an indicator of whether the effort applied is reasonable and consistent from one resource pool to another. However, sometimes you notice an unusual situation or you have a critical process that must be analyzed and controlled in a more detailed manner. In the bottom diagram, activity drivers are used to identify two output activities of resource pool A. This can be done on a permanent or intermittent basis depending on the criticality of the process information to business optimization decisions. Extensive use of activity drivers greatly increases the complexity of the model, so they should be used judiciously. RCA only uses quantity-based drivers to ensure resource capacities can still be calculated. No percentage or standing allocations. The principle of work allows RCA to include a process view when needed. The next two slides were covered in Part 2A and it may be useful to review that presentation. The objective of RCA is to produce a marginal profit and loss statement that clearly shows the nature and characteristics of several contribution margins. Costs are causally assigned to the level of the organization responsible for avoiding the cost. The principle of causality and responsiveness allow your operational resource flows to be effectively analyzed as avoidable and unavoidable for effective decision making supporting enterprise optimization. The list of benefits was also presented in WEMCAS Part 2A. Hopefully it is becoming clearer as you continue your study of RCA. This is the second in a series of presentations on resource consumption accounting. Thank you for listening. The next in the series is Part 3, an overview of RCA modeling. Please don't hesitate to contact me via the website, by direct mail, or by phone to discuss RCA or the RCA Institute.